Hey, scientists. I hope you guys enjoyed those videos about bird beaks and bird feet. I'm Lois. And I'm Micah. I really did enjoy those videos, but I'm a little tired from looking at all these screens so long. You know, I really need to wake up my mind and my body. So all let's right, get let's do up, it. Let's get into bird mode and go on a flight. So everybody get up, really get up. Out of your and seats. And really flap really hard. We gotta get to off the ground. Get up and take of off energy. in the ground. Uh oh. And now we that we're in the air, oh, we, can we can soar. soar. And we can look down like an eagle, see if there's any good food down there. Or we can flap really fast, like a swallow. Ooh. Slit around all of this. Catch some insects in the air. Woo! Oh, you know, I think I see a good place to land. All right, let's go for it. Let's go back here. Oh. Boy, that feels good. Yeah, it really feels good to wake up our bodies. I definitely needed that. I've been looking at screens for way too long. Let's get back to our subject, which is adaptations. So Micah, what, what is an adaptation? So an adaptation is a feature that an animal has that is particularly fit for their environment. So oh. we have hands, right? Which are really good at manipulating very fine things. So it's good for using tools and moving things around in our environment. Right. And so with bird beaks, there are lots of different kinds of adaptations. And we learned about four basic styles of bird beaks. Of course, there are others. But let's see if we can remember what we did learn about the straight beak, perfect for catching things like insects. There was the conical beak on the finches and the sparrows, good for crushing seeds and crushing nuts. There's the hooked beak on the hawks and on the owls, great for ripping that prey apart and eating it, eating that meat. And what am I forgetting? I think the mixed beak, right? You're right, the mixed beak. And that's the beak that we see on birds that eat all kinds of different things. And so they've got a hook in the front, they can grab stuff, they've got a cone sort of in the back and they can crush things. So mixed juice is a really good name for that, Bill. Now what about the feed adaptations? Yeah, you also learned about all the different feet adaptations. So there were the perching feet that were good for holding onto branches. And they had three toes forward and one toe back. And they could hop around a little bit, but not much else. Then there were the climbing feet. So you rotated one of the toes backwards and you could climb up trees. Ah. <laughs> He got but, all the way up, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and they're, they're fantastic at climbing trees and um, anything else? Shrubs, I guess, also. Inside yeah. a shrub, you could probably get around. Yeah. There's also gripping feet, which are good for holding down and holding on to their prey. So usually on birds of prey that eat other animals. And there's running feet, which, as the name implies, are good for running really fast. I bet the Roadrunner has running feet. You'd think. Hmm. Hmm. OK. <laughs> and last, what, what's the last one again? Swimming feet, right? Oh, that's right. Swimming feet often have webbed toes, kind of like on ducks. I'm sure you've seen that. Or also paddles. They look like little paddles on, the, on each t individual toe. All right, so now that we've kind of gone through uh, all of those different types of adaptations, let's look at some of our local birds, because what's remarkable is that on all of our local birds, we can see these same adaptations. Let's start with a great horned owl, one of my favorite birds, so big and beautiful and regal. Look at this picture. Wow. So what do we see here? Looks to me like he's got some pretty powerful feet and a pretty powerful beak, too. What is this? This is gripping feet. He's got to hold that mouse that he's just caught or the skunk or whatever he's going to be eating. And he's going to tear it apart with that beak, which is a hooked beak. So we have gripping feet and a hooked beak on the great horned owl. What's next? Next up is this house finch. They're also a native bird. Uh, and they live all throughout North America. But you can see them all over the place here in Pasadena. You can see this little male house finch hopping around and eating seeds at this bird feeder. Now, what's it doing to those seeds? It's crushing them, right, with its conical beak. You can see its little feet 
hopping around a little bit, perching on the bird feeder, but not doing much else, just standing there. So he's got perching feet and a conical beak. Very cool. Okay, what's up next? We've got here a western grebe. Take a look at this bird. It's a beautiful water bird, one of my favorite birds. So elegant with a long neck. And what kind of a bill do we see? Well, that's easy. It's a straight bill. And he's, what do you think he's gonna be catching? He's, here he is out on this lake. What's in the water? Fish. Yep, this guy's a fisher. He likes to hunt, he likes to hunt for fish. So he dives down, grabs him with that straight bill. That's easy. It's really rare to see their feet though, you know, because these birds hardly ever come out of the water. I don't think I have actually ever seen the feet of a Western Grebe, but we've got this photo for you. Take a look at that. Can you believe how big this foot is compared to the bird? Wow, he must be one powerful swimmer. And that must mean that these feet are what? Of course, they're swimming feet. It looks like a bunch of little paddles as though he was maneuvering a kayak, right? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Very cool, very cool animal. What's next? Well, before we move on to the next bird, I wanna see this, the grebe during its mating dance. Isn't that really cool? Oh, you're right, I almost forgot. The mating dance of the Western grebe is one of the most wonderful things that you can see in the wild, and I was lucky enough to see it last spring. These birds do a ballet together when they're deciding that they wanna have a family together on the water. They do a, they, they mirror each other, do all kinds of things, and then they get up on their feet and they run across the top of the water. Isn't that something else? And they really couldn't have done that if they didn't have those toes that are shaped like paddles, right? You're absolutely right. I don't think I'm gonna try running across the top of the water. That would be hard. <laughs> <laughs> Last up, let's look at the parrot. Now, these aren't native to Southern California. They're actually from Mexico, but they're here now and they're here to stay. So you can probably hear them squawking all day and all night, uh, all over town. So let's take a close look at this beak. You can see he's crushing some nuts, but it's not just a conical crushing beak, is it? He's also got that hook at the end. So this is a mixed beak. And, and you know, the parrots are fruit eaters, mm -hmm. and that's probably really useful when you're trying to dig into a piece of fruit, right? Yeah, trying to like tear it apart with the, with the hook on your beak, right? Right. So now let's look at their feet. It's climbing up on this branch here, right? And so it looks like climbing feet, but it's also, these feet are also really good for perching. And you know, they're also really good at gripping things. So these are actually also mixed feet. We didn't talk about that in the video, but these feet are good for both gripping onto things like the fruit and also branches, climbing up those branches. Yes, and parrots are some of the rare birds that can actually hang upside down. Mm -hmm. So th those are really, really good feet for being nimble in really? the tree and getting around. Why would they want to hang upside down? Well, maybe to grab a fruit that's kind of out of reach or to uh, go over and say hello to a friend. They're, they're very sociable birds and they're, they, they, they're, they're running around a lot in the tree when they, get, when they come home to roost, especially towards the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And that's when I've seen it. Okay. Uh, last up, I think we're gonna have you guys try to figure out what kind of beak and feet this bird has. So what are we gonna look at here? Let's look at the belted kingfisher. So the belted kingfisher is our North American kingfisher. Uh, let's take a look at that beak. What do you guys say? Okay, so I hope you got that one right. It's a straight beak and he's using it to catch fish, just like his name would indicate. What about the feet? Well, as you can see in this picture, this bird is perching and that's what he does. He grabs his fish with his long beak, then he bashes it against the branch before he swallows it whole. So he doesn't need his feet to hold the prey down the way an owl and a ra or a raptor would. He's really just using his feet to perch. So we've got, with this bird, a straight beak and perching feet. Now I hope you liked expanding and really focusing in on what you learned about beak shape and feet shape and their adaptations to, their, to the bird's environments. Next up, you're gonna make your own bird. 
We're so excited to see what you guys come up with. So be creative, have fun, and design some exciting new birds for this planet. Okay, bye. See ya.